In this video, we'll discuss translations, reflections, and rotations. Now let's understand some key parts of transformations. First, the notion of pre-image and image. The pre-image is the original shape, and the image is the transformed shape. These are important terms you will hear over and over again. And when we denote that image by using the points with the names having an apostrophe. So if I had point A in the pre-image, A prime would be in the image, and that'd be A with the apostrophe. So we just call that apostrophe, we say prime. Now, as we're performing our transformations of reflections, rotations, and translations, recognize that this does not change the shape. It's gonna create a congruent shape, just the location and position change. So if I had this arrow and I translate it downward to the right, it is still a congruent arrow that has now been translated. I could also rotate it and then translate it again and all three of these arrows are congruent because we haven't changed the shape or size, we've only changed the location and position. Now let's look at these transformations. Let's start with the translation. A translation moves every point on the plane a specific distance and direction. We can either do this by specifically stating the movements both vertically and horizontally, or we could be provided a vector that represents the distance and direction for which the translation will occur. Let's say we want to translate triangle ABC up three units and left two units. So we would literally think about moving those three points, even though it's the entire plane, think about it from the point perspective. I move the three points up, and then I'm going to move them to the left, and I'm going to place my translated points A prime, B prime, and C prime, and there I'll have my translated triangle. In another example, say I want to translate using the vector PM. Now I can recognize by this vector that it goes up one into the right five. I could also take this vector and attach it to each of these three points to help me see that translation. And that's where the points A prime, B prime, and C prime would be for the translated triangle. With a reflection, we're going to create a mirror image that's the exact same distance from the line of reflection. To do this, we're going to determine our line of reflection and then move each point the same distance away from the line of reflection. So say we have quadrilateral MNQP and we want to translate it or reflect it across the x-axis. So we're going to reflect it, which means we're now going to go across it and create that mirror image. So let's take this one point at a time. Here is my line of reflection at the x-axis. So if I want to create M prime, I'm going to make it one unit below the x-axis. When I go to N prime, I'm going to be two units below the x-axis. Q prime will be three units below the x-axis. And P prime will be four units below the x-axis. You can see I have the same, I'm in the same line, just I'm moving it directly below. Now I connect my four points and I have my reflected quadrilateral. Now with a rotation, we're going to turn all points on the plane a fixed angle about a fixed point. To perform the rotation, we first need to determine what is that center of our rotation and what angle we're going to rotate. We then need to also recognize the distance from each point to the center and then rotate each of those points in the pre-image while maintaining the given distance. So let's say we want to rotate triangle TUV 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So I want to keep the same distance and keep that 90 degree angle. So I can use a ruler to help me out here and I can create then T prime and you can see that became negative two one. I could then go to V prime, keeping that angle and that distance that would be, give me negative 3, 5, and then u prime will give me negative 5, 2. One of the nice things about working in the coordinate plane where we rotate about the origin is that a 90 degree rotation will always reverse those ordered pairs, and then we pay attention to the signs based on the quadrant. Here we rotated into the second quadrant, so all the x values became negative. 